What's up my friend, welcome back to another video and today we are going to uncover my full five step orchestration process. This will apply whether you are uh, looking at the live ensemble, the live symphony orchestra, or whether you're working with virtual instruments. For me, the process is exactly the same. Of course, there are some minute differences depending on whether you are actually transcribing your parts for live musicians or not, but the overall approach to orchestration is the same for me. So I hope this will really help you. I hope it will be valuable. And by the end of this, I hope it should give you some clarity and some confidence when you are working with your mockups in the future. So before we dive into those five steps, I would love to give you my five orchestration mistakes to avoid guide. Um, it's totally free and it goes over the um, the exact five mistakes that I think are the biggest offenders in MIDI mockups. So we'll cover things like how to recognize muddiness and what creates unbalanced arrangements, as well as foolproof doubling techniques for resonant and rich chords. We'll also cover a crucial aspect to consider for each instrument and how to think about idiomatic considerations to get the best out of those instruments. And finally, we'll talk about the number one pre-mixing technique to take your mix 80% of the way there. Hint, hint, it's not processing. It's not um, you know, applying a bunch of plugins on stuff. It really is just a simple technique that if you apply, it will get you so, so far. So I want to give this guide to you completely free. If you click the first link in the description box below, it'll take you straight there and you can download that right away. All right, let's dive in. So first of all, let's kind of do a quick recap of orchestration. What exactly is orchestration? My definition of orchestration is the assigning of certain instruments to perform a particular part in music. So usually um, a musical piece has multiple parts, multiple voices, and orchestration is the act of taking instruments or an ensemble of some sort and assigning those particular instruments to those specific voices or those parts. This can range from solo instruments like a solo violin, a solo flute, a solo trumpet, to a full symphony orchestra and everything in between as well. So a good orchestration can take the listener on a complete journey from start to finish, leaving them feeling fulfilled and content. The whole point of you know, sharing music with other people is to take them on a journey and give them a, a good experience, right? And so that's what we're trying to achieve with our arrangements as well. And then on the flip side, a poor orchestration can feel unbalanced and distracting, removing the listener from the music altogether and possibly making them feel, uh, make, making them frustrated or you know, just confused, maybe annoyed, you know, and we definitely want to avoid that uh, for sure. So why does orchestration really matter in addition to that, what we just talked about? Well, the instruments that we choose can create differing effects, right? And textures and timbres, depending on the musical context. That's the whole point of the orchestra is that each instrument has kind of a unique sound and timbre. So making good use out of those is an art in itself. For example, a solo violin can sound much more exposed and raw compared to a full violin ensemble performing that exact same line. And both of those ensemble types would be appropriate for different situations. So it just really depends on the type of vibe you're going for, what you're trying to achieve. And I like to think of each instrument as a unique color. So it allows us to think like a visual artist, right? Like a painter and deciding which color is appropriate for a given situation. Like if I'm trying to paint a field with a farm, I'm not gonna make the grass blue, right? Unless it's an alien um, planet or something. But there, there are just some colors that naturally fit better than others. And our job as the arranger and orchestrator is to make sure that the message of the piece of music is enhanced and really delivered by the ensemble that we are assigning to that piece of music. And yeah, these nuances in timbre pull emotions from us that can't be accomplished with a single instrument. And this is why I love ensembles like ensemble strings, ensemble woodwinds. They, they really just have that combined texture that sounds so, so beautiful and in the right context. So step number one, let's get into the process, is to establish our general instrumentation. I've talked about this before, how we should think about things from a more holistic overview type of perspective and then make our way down into the details. So this is no exception, really. So we're establishing our general instrumentation. So starting with an overview of our piece of music, which elements are the most important? Is the melody the most important? Is it the harmony? Is it the groove? Whichever element is the most important, you wanna start assigning instruments to that part first. So all of these elements have to be considered, the melody, harmony, and the rhythm. Choosing the right instruments for each aspect provides the skeleton or the basis for the rest of your arrangement. I think that makes sense. Like for example, if your melody is the most important thing and then you wanna assign like a violin section to it, violins one and two, 
Well, then the violins are already taking care of the melody, which probably means you're going to use the rest of the orchestra to harmonize or accompany that melody. So yeah, for example, the strings play melody, so then the brass or the woodwinds can play the harmony, and then the percussion performs the rhythm, for example. So you could use the same section for different roles, like for example, strings for both melody and harmony. You definitely want to consider using different groups for contrasting colors, right? Because we know the string section has quite a homogenous color throughout its entire family, right? Strings, uh, or violins, violas, celli, and basses, they all have different ranges and different articulations, but in terms of the instrument uh, build, right, the, the, the sound that they produce, it's, it's quite similar. So I think it's great practice to think about, oh, if the strings are doing one thing, can I use a different ensemble to try to accomplish the rest of the accompaniment, for example? You know, asking yourself those questions can be very useful. But notice that this step in general is just to look at what overall instrumentation we can use for our three main aspects of melody, harmony, and rhythm. And once you've nailed that down, then we can move on to step two, which is to become more specific. So which instruments in each section will perform their corresponding roles? For example, if the strings perform the melody, are the violins going to perform it or are the cellos going to perform it? So which section specifically, right? Can you combine them together in unison or should we put them in octaves for strength, right? And again, this will create different textures and different uh, timbres, different effects, but this is definitely something to consider. And this is where we decide exactly which instrument plays each part and whether it's going to be on its own, like a solo instrument, or combined with others in more of a chamber context, or let's say a full symphony size orchestra. And a great question to ask here is what color and effect am I trying to achieve? And then go from there. For example, if I want something military, if I want something bright and open, then I'm probably going to choose a brass instrument like a trumpet or a horn. And then if I want the register to be high and blaring, then most likely it's going to be the trumpet because it is naturally the highest brass instrument in the orchestra, right? Um, or at least of the common instruments. So asking yourself the question, what color and effect am I trying to achieve will really guide you in that direction, given that you, know, the, you have a good understanding of those different instruments and how they sound in the first place. And once we've assigned those, now it's time to sketch. So the first two steps you could have done basically on paper or, you know, on your computer in a Word document, laying down those different instruments and deciding which instruments are being assigned to those different parts. But now that we've actually committed to those instruments, now it's time to actually sketch them out in our DAW, right? So you want to choose your desired sample libraries. You should probably have a good few workhorse libraries that you use on a regular day-to-day -day basis and then lay out each instrument one at a time. And this is my personal approach. I will do this every single time. I'll lay out the most important elements. I'll play them out. Maybe it's an entire section or maybe it's an uh, one phrase, but I will go through and play out all the different instruments by hand, one by one. So I prefer using individual instrument patches because it's flexible and it gives you access to the different uh, instruments on their own, but ensemble patches can also work for general ideas. And also, I like to record the melodic instruments first, then harmonic. So, for example, violins, or uh, you know, if if it's my main elements, then um, if the main melody, I should say, is my main aspect, then I'll probably record those instruments first because the harmony, the timing of it, the movement, and the the velocity that will all depend on how the melody is moving and how it's flowing. So, I always record the most high priority instruments first. And yeah, while you do this, you want to pay attention to the details, dynamics, articulations. Like you could fiddle with this while you're producing and maybe even after your arrangement is complete. But I think if, if you can nail down and get those articulations more or less accurate while you're laying down those lines, then you've already got a good idea and good indication of how it's going to sound as the final product, if that makes sense. So that's step number three is actually sketching out those instruments one at a time. Then step number four is going beyond that and adding the polish, the cherry on top. So now that our main instrumentation is laid out, now it's time to go back and add some sparkle. A good question to ask ourselves here is what additional elements could take our arrangement to the next level? Ear candy is really so important for taking your orchestration from a nine to a 10, from good to great, right? So some of my favorites would include woodwind runs, harp glissandi, string ostinatos, shakers, percussive hits, whatever, and other small elements. Like these are not elements that are absolutely mandatory. The ones that are mandatory are the most um, 
the most high priority instruments like we talked about, like the melodic instrumentation and then the harmonic ones as well to outline the chords and get the textures. But what else, like what, what's the polish we can add on top? And these are some of my favorite ways to get that polish. Again, none of them are absolutely essential, but think of them as the final polish, taking you from the, the, the nine to the 10, okay? And then finally, step number five is to do just double check everything. So it's our final chance to see if we've missed anything or if we wanna make any final tweaks. Like, are there any holes in the arrangement? Is something sounding empty? Uh, maybe we need to fill it in with a warm texture like a French horn or, or a bassoon or something. Or is everything sounding just a, maybe a little bit tense in the high end, maybe a little nasally or something. Maybe it's one of those instruments that is just playing too high of a dynamic at a certain point. Like this is really a chance to go back and just figure that out. So are all the instruments achieving the effect that you're actually looking for? Do you need to add or layer any extra instruments for depth and color? Another thing is, does the arrangement feel clogged and overwhelmed, right? Perhaps you need to solo, mute, and remove some redundancies. As, uh, you know, as musicians working with sample libraries, it's really easy to just add more and more patches. And at a certain point, it starts to sound muddy and just clogged and overwhelmed. And it's, it's not until it's too late that we realize, oh, we actually added way too much. And a lot of those, those instruments are kind of serving the same function. So you can just solo up the instruments or solo up, um, you know, the entire mix and have a listen to what's actually playing. And if you can mute certain instruments and it's not making too much of a difference, then you can just remove them all together. And then one final check is if you can listen through the entire track without anything catching your attention in an undesirable way, then you are finished your arrangement. So for example, if I'm arranging a piece and I'm asking myself like, is that the final arrangement? Am I happy? Do I wanna add anything else or take anything away? Then what I'll do is I'll listen to the entire track start to finish, I'll loop it, I'll close my eyes, listen back a few times. And if I can listen through start to finish and not have anything poke out at me as being negative or something that needs to be fixed, then I know that the arrangement is finished. And that's it, it's as simple as that. It, it's, a, it's a subjective thing, but you get more used to it with experience. All right, so let's just quickly recap those five steps. Number one is again, to establish the general instrumentation. Again, I would write this out. You can do this in a notes app. You can do this on your um, tablet, your, your computer, but just it's a more holistic approach, right? So you're, you're basically saying, I want the melody to be in the strings. I want the accompaniment to be brass and percussion, right? So start from that overall perspective and then we go to step two, which is to then be more specific. So do I want the melody to be in the violins or the violas or the cellos, right? So then you lay out those exact instruments for each part. Then you start to sketch out in your DAW. Use your sample libraries, lay them in one at a time, try to play them in live, use your mod wheel, uh, fiddle with the velocities, make sure it sounds as realistic as possible. Then we add the cherry on top. So we listen back a couple times. We ask ourselves what could take the track even further and give it that extra final polish. Again, that could be woodwind runs, it could be string runs, it could be trills, it could be glissandi, whatever is appropriate for the context, um, that could definitely take that arrangement to the next level. Now, keep in mind, you don't need those all the time. You don't need ear candy all the time. If it's a more intimate situation and it's kind of a calmer ballad, then you might not actually need that ear candy, but you want that core instrumentation to really be honed in and be, be very, um, deliberate, right? Very, very uh, purposeful in what you're trying to get out of them, right? So very important to keep in mind. And last but not least, double check everything. So it's the last time to go back and see if there's any final polishes we need to make before we commit and move on to the mix. Again, if you can listen through a few times, close your eyes and enjoy the piece of music without anything sticking out at you as needing fixing, then your, your orchestration is basically finished. And this is the five-step workflow that I basically follow every time I work on a mock-up or a piece of music. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And before you go, again, I wanna give you my five orchestration mistakes to avoid guide. It's totally free and it covers exactly what creates muddy and unbalanced arrangements, something we definitely don't want, right? We'll cover the opposite. We'll cover foolproof doubling techniques for resonant and rich chords, something we all want. Um, we'll also cover a crucial aspect to consider for each instrument and idiomatic considerations for the most realism in your mockups. 
as well as the number one pre-mixing technique to take your mix 80% of the way there, which makes the entire rest of the mix so easy to finish. Hopefully this helps you. Again, it's totally free. If you want to click the first link in the box below, it'll take you to where you can download it instantly. And again, you can keep it with you when you're working on your next mock up. Um, just double check this guide, make sure you're not making those mistakes and you should be good to go. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.